Okay, confession time. I actually screwed something up on the last video, which was about NASA wanting to fly a helicopter on Mars. The irony is I got all of the footwork correct then, just kind of missed the goal at the last moment. Yes, it's true that to fly a drone on Mars, you need about one third of the power because Martian gravity is about one third of Earth's gravity. And to generate that thrust, you need to do it off one hundredth of the atmosphere because the Martian atmosphere is 100 times thinner than Earth's atmosphere. And sure, all of that was in the original video, along with the statement that building a craft like this would be a technological nightmare. I even stated that this would probably never be able to fly anywhere on Earth outside of the vacuum chamber because the propellers would be designed for this very thin atmosphere. All the pieces were in place, then this happened. Now, NASA claims they've had mock-ups of these things flying in a vacuum chamber at about the right pressure, and I can believe that, even if the thing is clearly tethered by a safety wire. And someone pointed out in the comments the obvious. Yeah, that wire is not for stability. It's to provide two-thirds of the lift such that this thing can get off the ground, because to fly, your thrust needs to be equal to the craft's weight, the force you feel under gravity. So for your helicopter on Mars, it's going to have one third of the weight because of one third of the gravity. So you only need one third of the thrust compared to what you would need on Earth. So basically, that Mars helicopter will never truly fly on Earth unless the motor in it is three times more powerful because it needs three times the thrust to fly on Earth because it's got three times the weight it's going to have on Mars. Now, putting a motor in three times more powerful isn't actually that hard, but it would transform it on Mars from being a helicopter to a stunt helicopter. I mean, remember, just to be able to fly, to hover, more or less the same thing, the thrust that you're getting off your motor needs to be equal to your weight. So, if you turn the engine off, you fall under gravity. But if you had a motor three times as powerful as you need to fly, if you put it to full throttle, you accelerate up twice as fast as you would fall under gravity. There it is. Which would be on Mars a ludicrous excess of power for anything other than a stunt helicopter. So, obviously, when NASA wants to test this on Earth, they can't scale down the gravity, so they've got to make their drone two-thirds lighter somehow. And the way you do this is you just get a wire that takes two-thirds of the weight off the drone. Now, the flip side of this, of course, is you're not really flying if you have a wire attached to it, which is just one of these amazing things. This drone, this helicopter, will never truly fly on Earth. The first time it will ever take off entirely under its own power is when it's on Mars, which is one hell of a ballsy thing. However, not quite as ballsy as the Apollo astronauts, because when they were on the moon, they only had one ascent engine and no backup plan. One tiny ascent engine. The combustion chamber was about the size of a basketball, and including the engine bell, the entire engine merely got up to about waist height. And further, when the astronauts took off, literally one step backwards, and they could sit on the housing for the ascent engine. And that engine only weighed about as much as one of the astronauts. And their entire life depended on it firing and working properly. If it fired, they lived. If it didn't, they died. And flipping a switch like that has to be one hell of a moment in life. So naturally, they wanted the most reliable engine they could find. And they found it in a pressure-driven engine. You see, most rocket engines have turbo pumps to provide the pressure to push the fuel and the oxidant into the combustion chamber. But that's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things to go wrong. This time, they just went for a pressure-driven feed. And not a particularly high pressure-driven feed either. Water rockets run at about seven atmospheres of pressure. The pressure injection on the ascent engines of the lunar lander was about 10 atmospheres. Compare that to the mighty F1 engine that launched Apollo from the Earth, which had an injection pressure of about 70 atmospheres. But the nice thing about the relatively modest pressure-driven engine 
is that it was very simple. To take off, all you had to do was open up the valves, one for the oxidizer, one for the propellant. And when they mix in the combustion chamber, they spontaneously ignite. These were hypergolic propellants. Corrosive as hell, I might add. And that was it. You were on your way home. You've really got a feel, though, for those people who actually sat on the moon with their entire life hung by a single slender technological thread. Two, one, ignition. Right away, Houston. Thanks for good.